all again and welcome back to So What, our conversational sewing show with me, Stuart from The Woolpatch, and of course, Master Taylor Couturier, Carol Elaine. Hey, Carol. Hey, Stuart. It's, the end of another day. How isn't are it you? Just and another So What episode. So it's lovely to be back. We had some lovely feedback from the Jersey video, our conversation on Jersey, didn't we? We did indeed, yeah, and a lot of problems I think are starting to resolve, aren't they? We've got some solutions yes. to some of the problems that people are having, which is which is great. This is what it's all about, really. Absolutely, and 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 building our our our, our knowledge base and our and our repertoire as we become more confident sewers, um, and that can be at any level, can't it? It can be people who have who have been sewing with Jersey for years what and that just reminded me actually one of the questions one of the answers about um when we you know when we were talking about why jersey rolls why knit rolls yes. and it's because of that um uneven distribution of fabric uh, right. and and there was a comment saying oh i i i've only just learned that today <laughs> so it's, well, it's never too late are we to learn no it's not and i think sometimes i see it on a smaller scale but it was it was it was a revelation to me to see it with that knit, that, you mm. know, that whole different texture. And what you showed us yeah. really explained it far better than, oh. than anything I've seen in my work. So. Well, I yeah, see win-win all around. So today we're going to um, be talking, we're sort of going to, we're going to carry on with the Jersey theme because um, I think you've, you've, You've made more progress on your on your garment that you started last last week, haven't you? That's right. And yes, then so we're going to talk about interfacing with that. Is that right? Yes, I'd like to do that. I'd like to talk a little bit more about how to control these tricky fabrics. Oh. We know they're tricky. We know they roll. We know they're fluid. We know they have a mind yeah. of their own sometimes. And we know that sewing is about putting two things together and they have to marry up. Yeah. Well, sometimes half of that uh, marriage goes haywire right and it <laughs> yeah. and we don't know why we don't know why it could be cut slightly off grain or it just it was pressed differently or handled differently something and they don't match so it's how to give yourself an edge and how to control everything and today in the shop is we had our R&D team in so when you're making a collection you know for the high street ready mades um, a lot of work goes in that maybe people don't realize so yeah, we started with when you said R and D. Can so you... research, research and development. Oh, cool! Of oh, course, cool. yeah. Oh, okay, so you're researching the garment, the history. You're researching fabrics. You're sourcing fabrics. Yeah. All of that goes in before you even start making the garment, wow. and then the development side is usually the, the pattern development, and then you put those two things together: your cloth, your pattern, and then you try it out. So it's. Okay. It's an ongoing thing. And so with our, with our dress that we were talking about, I, we just had fabric draped on, on, on a stand, didn't Did we? You? <laughs> we've, got, we've, got a, we've got a dolman sleeve. Ooh. A dolman sleeve. What, so there's an overarm seam here. Yeah. And there's an in-arm seam here. Um, there's no seam on the shoulder. No. It's called a, a dolman sleeve. And any any have, reason why? Is that a name of someone that came up with it, that? It's what it's called. <laughs> Professor Dolman, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's one of the sleeve variations. And um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of, of, of our sewers, experienced sewers, know this very well. Yeah. So we've got this combined with a boat neck. So that's it's shaped like a boat. Yeah. yeah. It goes shoulder to shoulder. And when you're developing this, you want to make sure that any underwear, undergarments don't show. You know, That's so going to be hard that, isn't it? Just, I, because some people's shoulders are more broad and than others. So how, how do you how do you research at what length is a is a good boat neck and what isn't? Perfect question. Really good question there. We're using, of course, mannequins that have you know decades of development, and then we take standardized measurements. Today we had five or six people try this on. So uh, we, we worked with their shoulders um, spread yeah. there. Um, and so, so this is, you know, half of the dress, we're happy with the top. Wow. And now we're going to, in the next couple of days, we're going to, we're going to attach the skirt and we're going to yeah. be developing the blues on. How much do we want? You know, how much of an, like an overlap do we yeah. want? Do we want to belt the dress? Do we want it 
it's going to have probably an elasticated waist in it. So again, wow. it's just an ongoing thing. This garment is, is evolving from a, a drawing or an inspirational piece or something the designer has seen um, on the high street or the catwalk. And we're going to try to recreate our own version oh, of this. That's so exciting. And that must have been yeah, lovely when you had all the different people in trying it on. Did you, were you putting in pins, uh, you know, going, oh, is it, is it too long or is it too short? Yes, well, one of the things we realized is that I had cut the dolman sleeve a little higher uh, with the prototype. And so the designer said she wanted more fullness down here because okay. the cloth is, is practically weightless. You know, see, I can see the drape, it looks beautiful. Pretty, isn't it? So we think now that we've got a good, we have a good match of cloth to design, you know? Yeah. And it's it's a bit sparkly. It's got that Lurex thread in it, the silver. Yeah. Um, so that gives it a bit of jazziness. And then we also worked on how this is gonna go over the head. So- Oh, right, so yes. Slip. But you see, we're gonna talk about this because you can see that's lovely and crisp, isn't it? Yeah, that, nice. now that's not as floppy as everything else, so. That's right. So we've got some architecture in there. We we have some um, we have some stability, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. You'll see in the in the video okay. using fusing, which we've talked about. Yeah. How we get this this floppy fabric to do that? You know, to be obedient. Oh. Right? So the, the and that, magic of the preparation, really. Yeah, that's a brilliant example of that. Where okay. where you you. You've prepped that, and and during the development stage, you said you obviously the first part of your sleeve you cut shorter, so you've now developed it, so it's now longer. Did you That's develop right. different weights of fusible or interfacing? Did you try different weights, or did you was it just lucky first time worked quite well? Well, I I knew that I would have to use something on the lighter side. Ah, right. A, yeah. a weight that wouldn't overwhelm what we have. Yeah. Wouldn't put too much stability yeah. in, too, you know, too crisp. Yeah. So I, and, and I, I'll explain this in the video, but I, okay. I used a piece of fusing and I cut this on the bias. So it's a, just a little bit more pliable uh -huh. fluid. Yes. So instead of putting it on the straight, I put it on the bias, which so just moves a little bit. Yes, and but it's still I, firm, but you've got an extra little bit of give. That's right. Oh. And it's nice when part of the garment, just the right bits of the garment, have that stability, like the sleeve cuff yes. and your neck and then your closure. It's really nice when everything else can just flow and be yeah. really free and great and have all that spontaneity and, and, and movement, but yet where you need the structure you have it so it's, yeah. it's deciding where and when to, to you know to use that those tricks absolutely oh well there we are then let's go straight into a, a little video that carol's prepped for us explaining about the the interfacing and and where she's perhaps as you said i love that word where where certain parts have got architecture in to to give it body so we've been talking about sewing with jersey and other couture fabrics that are tricky because they're slippery and they're quite fluid. And here's another fabric which is very testy. This is silk velvet. And you can see just how, you know, how tricky this must be to control. So one of the things that you can do to stabilize is to use a fusing. Now this is a woven fabric. You can see this is the black that I've got attached here. And what this does is if you get a nice woven one, you can see how it keeps everything taut. So I'm trying to stretch this and you can see that it's not going anywhere because this is attached and it's stabilizing the fabric. And if you're working with couture, for example, the, the garment I'm gonna be working on next is this 30 style suit. So, there's a lot of areas which we really need to control. You know, the points of the lapel here. We want the front edge, the roll line and the front edge to be secure and taut. We want the length to be maintained. We might have some bound buttonholes here. We want those to be very stable and neat and hold their shape. And then any other detail that we're putting into the garment, want to make sure that we're gonna get nice square lines and even if it's, you know, it's a little bit more creative with the cutting, we want to make sure that everything holds its shape. So that's just one fabric we're working with. Now we're going to go back to our knits. 
and I'm working on this dress here which is in two pieces. It has a top with a dolman sleeve and a skirt. And I want to show you, first of all, how by using fusing, you get this really nice, clear, clean, very crisp neckline. The structure underneath is a simple warp and weft fusing, which I've attached on, an overlocked edge, seam allowance here, which I've clipped around the curve. And I don't know if you can see, but there is an understitch here as well. It's not going to show up too, too clearly because it's it's red on red and then it has this lurex. But when you're using your overlocking, um, it's another thing you can do to be a little bit creative with it. You can see here that I'm actually using three different colors of thread. I've got red, I've got a claret, and I have a mauve color. And this is another way that you can kind of hide what you're doing on the edge. So that keeps it nice and diffuse the color. Um, the other thing that we can do here is we can turn this under and we can make a machine stitch there. And that keeps the overlocking completely out of the way because as you know, it's very easy to pick up one of these loops and then the whole overlocking can just come away and it can become taut. So this is probably the most secure way to keep your work nice and clean. Seam finishes. We have a centimeter seam, which I've overlocked and I've pressed to one side. So because knit tends to curl and it is a little bit um, fluid, this keeps it all clean and going in one direction. So on the outside of the garment, you know, you've got that nice finish. And just one more thing I want to show you, which is on the sleeve hem. It's not finished yet, but you can see that I've put a piece of fusing in here, which is on the fold line and comes past the fold line, okay? So, so your facing, which is this part here, the facing is completely fused, but also you get a little bit of fusing going into the sleeve itself, so you get a really nice hang and a nice crisp finish. So there you are, just a few tips and tricks with working with knits which can be a little bit tricky and a little bit slippery, and how you can use fusing to control your work. There we are. So uh, that was fascinating, uh, especially seeing where you had put the in interfacing. Interfacing, fusible, it's the same name. We just call it different things, isn't it? So interfacing is part of the architecture of, right. of the, yeah, the interior of the garment. And so interfacing can be woven or non-woven, and yeah. it can be fusible or yeah. non-fusible so you it's, it's all it's all interfacing interlining but it just depends how, how it's uh, treated and how you use it whether it's with a with an iron through yeah. heat or, or or whether you just uh, hand sew it in so on your on your cuff one if you can show us that one again that was did you hand sew that in i know you said on the machine you've got the uh, you've got a nice interlocked edge yes yes so this is fusible. So you've it's ironed that with, down. I ironed it on with an iron. Yep. I put a little bit of, sprayed it with just a little bit of mist. And then I put a press cloth over it. And then I left the iron on for a good 15 seconds Yeah. before picking the iron up. I mean, you, you don't move the iron like when you're pressing, you, you move the iron all the time. When you're applying fusible, you just put the iron on top, leave it, pick the iron up, put it on a new section. Yeah. I mean, that is the safest way. We're not talking about a huge amount of interfacing no, here, but no. if you were fusing, say the whole four part of a garment, then yeah. you have to be reading, then you take it to a professional fusing service and they would do like a whole meter of fabric at once. Oh and yes, we talked about that before and that's where, uh, Sil Sil oh, I forgot the name, S Serena got a bit of a cropper with one of her dresses because she fused a huge amount of fabric herself, didn't she? And it got all bobbly. With a domestic iron and yeah, didn't get that even, no. that overlap, you know? Yeah, that, that was heartbreaking, wasn't it, for her? Because yeah. otherwise the garment was a huge hit. It was a beautiful, yeah. you know, good fabric with a good design. Mm. It was, you know, she was on her way, but that, that just let her down, didn't it? So you've got, you've got architecture on the sleeve there. You've got architecture, just show us the back of that again, because that would just so, look 
you can see. Yeah, so this is how this is how we're going to get into the garment. It's, yeah. it, it's going to have a covered button and, and a loop. Oh. And then inside here is this is all this is all fused inside. You can see that yes. the white. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. And 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 how did you cope with the boat neck? What decision did you make there with with the edge of that? Is or is that just oh you've so got there's a, a big facing. Yeah. We've got a very generous facing which is fused and then it's it's overlocked on the edge. Yeah. And then in that, see, see what that does is that puts this strength and stability you all see. the way down here. Yeah. And then there's a separate section of interfacing here. Yeah. So there's interfacing down here on the straight because I've got a tiny little facing, which is just at about a centimeter here. Yeah. Where the fabric rolls in and then it joins on to my other facing. Oh. And then, the, the, you know, there's a seam on the shoulder here. There's a seam on the shoulder of the garment. There's also a seam on the interfacing. Wow. So it's, yeah. it's married, it's married up. It's not just like, you know, sometimes we finish a neck with just a bias strip, don't we? Indeed, so yes. One piece that goes all the way around. Yeah. Well, this is actually uh, the same exact shape um, that goes all the way around the front. It's the same shape and seaming yeah. at the shoulder and it's exactly the same shape. Um, at the back as well. Oh, just I mean, lovely. That's quite, that's quite pretty. I, I, mean, I was going to say that's quite <laughs> stylish, isn't it? <laughs> it could be, a, that could be the finish. Maybe, that's what's like. maybe, maybe the, the, the lady does it towards the end of the evening uh, uh, when she's, <laughs> you know, let her hair down. <laughs> she lets, oh, it's like, it's like speaking to James Bond. <laughs> Will you, um, my button, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what fun i know fun. i know oh well it's that's fine you can see the fusing doing its work there brilliantly you know it's it's rather obvious with clothing you know how this happens and um there, there, there must be there must be things in your work where um you you have to strengthen or there, there's there's oh, got to yeah. be architecture in in knitting there has to be in uh you know in, in your quilt making uh, you know, maybe you could share with us how you control fabric. Absolutely. Well, we have good old um, two things. Um, so in, in patchwork, we are we are cutting up lots of fabric in essence. You're cutting up beautiful fabric <laughs> into little pieces and sewing it back together in different ways. Um, so sometimes you can be dealing with very, very small bits of fabric. Um, normally you go down to perhaps one inch, one and a half inch squares. You could be doing a lovely, um, what we call um, one, two, three, like a, a, a nine patch there. Yeah. You could be making a beautiful nine patch block that is literally four inches. So you think of all those one, two, three, four, nine squares, how small they are. So, so if you were to cut that fabric just straight away, you're going to have lots of bias, aren't you? Um, when you cut all your fabric up. So what we tend to do is we bulk spray our fabric first. We have this, uh, called Best Press. That's a brand name, Mary Ellen. Um, it's a starch or what they call a sizing. You size your fabric. Have you heard that terminology before? I've bought fabric that has been sized. They are. They, they say. I've never seen that. That's amazing. Yeah. And this is like a, 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 a little spray. <laughs> Um, with uh, this one's got no scent and what that that is good for th this one best press just gives a very light sizing uh, it's actually very good for getting that crease out you know um, when you buy fabric on the bolt you've got that fold that crease at the top haven't you yes yes, yes. maybe not so with dressmaking fabric because I think dress more dressmaking comes on the um the bolt on the on the tube doesn't it but That's um, right. uh, patchwork fabric comes with a fold in it 
and that is very difficult to get out with your normal iron so this helps the iron to get that annoying crease out but um if you were doing patchwork i might want to use a bit more than just this so i have to say i'm a good fan of starch oh you don't say yeah basic starch and you uh, spray your what half a meter of fabric and uh, put your iron on and then if you want it stiffer spray again and put your iron on again and it comes out beautifully crisp i mean it's like a, it's 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 almost yeah. firm it, yeah. it loses its floppiness does this um does it get all over your hands and muck no. things up what, no. what happens to the sole plate of the iron what well i guess Oh, I, I presume it's all, it, it, it's, it's all, it's, wow. it's all the iron. So um, it's like what that, our parents used to do when they were eyeing our school shirts. <laughs> this is how I remember starch, yeah, you know? That's it. and, exactly and, I, that. I, and I used to remember that, you know, when we were making, um, when we were making tail suits and things, di dinner suits, black tie, and they would always bring the, the shirts back from the dry cleaner and there would be an instruction, heavy starch, light starch, yeah. you know, a de degree of that. Yeah. But I, I'm, it's how refreshing. So I just, mm. <laughs> I've never heard of that, you, you know, so, uh, preparing fabric, but I can yeah. see that some of the quilts I've seen have uh, pretty scary patterns. Mm. Um, like you say, tiny yeah. uh, well, look, viral look. And, and things and- uh, and uh, that one there. Look at there, look at there, yes. So is that like is, a... That's um, a six, one, two, three, yeah. Or an eight inch block, but you've got, you've got a one inch by one inch strip and then another one, and then another one, then another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. And this is called a log cabin oh, block. Yes. So you think when you're cutting those one inch strips and you go to your sewing machine, the yeah. fabric could move quite heavily and could blend out of shape because you've got you've cut into the fabric so you've got bias on show so the starch just helps save that from flopping about too much you know when you manhandle your your fabric and you're you're putting oh, yes. two fabrics yeah. together and it's going through the machine that extra strength of the starch means that the that hopefully your which it's right the the the, the feeding dogs don't um you know warp it out of shape sure sure and sure there's lots of things that can go wrong you think this is a fire you know this is a, a you know mistake proof machine that we're using but tensions can you know slow down sometimes just the speed you know just on the yeah. presser foot that can change the way yeah. fabric is fed through but i that i can now see because some of the the precision in quilt making is is mind-blowing absolutely maybe. yeah and, and I love the way they use, um, I know this isn't about stability, but I love the way they use color to create movement mm. in these big patterns. Yeah, the, the, the skill that goes into quilting and patchwork is phenomenal because you think those blocks, once you've made a, a six inch block, you've then got to attach that six inch block to another six inch yeah. block. Yeah. And so mm. you need your blocks to be the same size because if, if a couple are, uh, you know, an eighth of a, a, an inch out, it could skew your whole design. And, oh, it, and, and right. if you're trying to meet match points, you know what it's like yes. with dressmaking, how important those, your your little, um, your your notches are. Yes, well, absolutely, it's a, yes. It's a bit yeah. like that in, in patchwork. So starching and sizing um, is, uh, is, I suppose, our, our way of, of supporting the fabric um, uh, in, in its creation, because in patchwork, you're not necessarily going to interface it to make it stronger. So therefore we'll use, yeah. we'll use a starch. And you're interfacing in the, if, with your trade. It's like you're spraying on the interfacing. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Just spraying on that mist and that, that webbing or whatever it is. And then when you apply the heat, you don't run the risk of some of the risks that we have. It's like, putting the iron over it too fast, making a fold in the interfacing that, you know, or having the facing curl the wrong way, then you run over it with a hot iron Ooh. that gums up the iron. Yeah. Um, 
or you cut the interfacing slightly too big when you iron it on your press board, then, and you trim it, you're left with these little flakes of interfacing stuck. You've just got this smooth little bit of what, what looks like cardboard, you know, at the end, yeah. don't you? Yeah. I wonder if that's something I should think about. Is does this restrict itself to cotton? Because the cotton can take heat and um... no, no, I, I, not that I know of. Um, uh, but then I'm only really using cotton in patchwork. Patchwork is mainly a cotton uh, uh, fabric. You wouldn't really use anything thicker like an upholstery fabric. Um, and and you, you might use a poplin cotton, but that's then very floppy. Even more so than to use a starch just to give that poplin a bit more body. Yeah. Does that also help from uh, keep it from fraying? The starch? Uh, it, it, it would do technically because it's 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 gunked together hasn't it it's it's sort of whatever that starch is done to grip everything together it would in that's theory good. yes yes so, so huge bonus oh absolutely and if if our viewers out there if you haven't used starch and you're a patch worker doing lots of blocks then then try it you will you will be amazed and you may not go back to not using uh, starch ever again and you can get some people don't uh, i run out of my preferred starch this is dylon so there are chemicals in that you can buy starches now that are more environmentally friendly and have a non-chemical base um i think her name is june taylor she's a patch worker and her starch is non because this is a, um, an aerosol, you can get yeah. some starches which are like a, a watering can, a spritzer. So there are there are different types of starches out there if people have certain, you know, interest. Of, 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 as I say, this one, I, I just run out. So that was just a Dylon one, like you would use for your laundry, which is absolutely fine. It does the same thing, doesn't it? It does, it does. It does. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good news that the products are evolving too, to be you know, better oh. for the environment, better for you in a, in a, in a shop as well, um, what you're breathing in and out. Indeed. And the June Taylor one, I like the June Taylor starch because it, it's, it's this layered one. So if you only need a, a little bit of body, then you just do one yeah. spritz and iron. But if you really needed it a bit more body because it was going to be cut up lots and you, you're worried about your bias, then you just spritz another spray and then you, you, you iron it down. So you build up your thickness of, of firmability, as it were. I'm gonna do some tests on this. So it's June Taylor. June Taylor is the brand. I think she's an American patchwork. Oh, my, I think she's American, but that's the brand. You should be able to get it from your local oh, quilt yeah. store, like me. I'll have them. <laughs> I yeah. In stock. But well, it's, it's, it. it's a good yeah. one. Try it. I will do. Cheers. Well, Cheers there we go. You see, look at that. Hey. So, um, yeah. Different ways of how we. Uh, I love that uh, that uh, idea that of, of building the architecture of that fabric in order for it to do its job. Mm, absolutely, and it's 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 kind of, sometimes it's a subtle layering, um, like what you're doing with the spray. Yeah. Test it out. Is it? It does it have enough body? Put another layer on. Add some more yeah. heat. Build it up. It's subtle, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a very lightweight cloths and putting something in that's mm. not going to overwhelm it. Trying it out, trying it on people, see if the stability is there. You know, it's different with clothing, but it's, we've got the same problems mm. with our work. Um, and then at the other end of the scale, you, you're making a men's tailored suit. Talk about layering. You know, you've got you've got your canvas, you've got horse hair, you've got domet, you've got mm. And, and all of these things are put together with uh, loose padding stitches and they, they can move and they can mold over time. So the architecture is built over the life of wearing these clothes where this is for the ready-mades. Um, we don't have that, you can't do that. You can't put that process in a factory. Yeah. You can do it with your hand making things, you know, and you're watching and, and making sure everything is layered properly over, you know, as you're building it up. In a factory, this these things just shoot down the line, don't I they? Bet. go very fast. So then people don't have the time to think or to, they just put the notches together, zoom yeah. it through the line. Yeah. Yeah. So 
it also it has to do a lot with the speed of making the garment, how much time you've got. And this is why it's so, you know, satisfying and fulfilling to be, you know, a home sewer or to mm. have your own business or to have it as a hobby. It's because you, you can put the time in. And, and now there's so much available to help you with that, isn't yeah. there? Which is a, it's a great thing to, to encourage people on further. Well, it's going to be lovely seeing this progress. So hopefully when we do another yeah. So What, we're going to see the next stage. You'll see it near finished. Oh. And we'll talk about how, yeah, how to put this, because it's a great long um, pleat up the side of one leg of this dress. Oh. It's really lovely. <laughs> very feminine really sexy garments so we'll, yes. and we'll be deciding you know how high to go with that and yes. we'll be trying it on different people and then of course you know you sit down and then you cross your legs and the pleat completely opens up so we've got to test that you yes. know it goes and... back to <laughs> it goes back to her at that 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 she's at a posh do isn't she so she's just had a button at the back undone now she sits down and <laughs> i know and it's yeah. the choreography the is is there's a lot of tolerance in the Korea, isn't there? You can yeah. find, you know, oops, wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, well, it's so good. Yeah. Well, talking about you making and, and and enjoying homemaking, look what I dug out of the garage. Um, and I know we wanted to, we we sort of <gasps> when we were talking about what to talk about today, we were going to talk about um fabric and and warps and wefts and things weren't That's we it. That's it. Yeah. so we could talk hopefully um what you talk about can i we could demo with this so mm -hmm. i've got so much in my garage and i <laughs> i was cleaning it out on my day off yesterday and i came across this roll of gingham so this is um 44 inches wide and it's i've always liked gingham but i have always felt a bit like um Follow the yellow brick road, Dorothy. <laughs> it's, it's Dorothy and all that classic dress. Yes. I love game. I love game. It's, it's it's crisp. It's even. It's it's absolutely. You know these intersecting stripes. It's it? great plaid. I I love game. Look, it's spectacular. So and um, it's quite a, 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 a. I don't know. Is is all gingham of a certain weave, as in thin thin thickness, or do you get different? types of thickness of gingham or does it tend to be a certain weight you you get a lot of variety of, of weights and and scale of your ah. checks i've done a lot of work with you know the eighth inch check the really the, the tiny one uh can be a bit stroby can't it yes you know, well um this i think <laughs> is a um i think this is probably what they would you call it poplin weight as a cotton it's it's yeah, yeah the weave is popular. Yeah, but uh, I don't think oh, see-through. It's very light, but only a little bit. So, so I think we... I think I would do that shirt again that I made when you know when I um, went wrong with my plackets, and I think I that would be a lovely summer shirt. Um, and I might even, I think the pattern to get me away from doing those plackets. Where is it? Oh yeah, here's here's my sleeve. I think oh. the pattern had a variation to have one of those um, sleeves where it's almost rolled up and, and pinned. Oh, yes, yes. and did you put a tab, a tab yeah. on it? Yeah, why don't you do that? So well, I might do the, the short sleeve version, but um, yeah. uh, so I, I'm going to have a go with that because I've got all this fabric to use. So oh, I, that's great. And it's an even plaid right it's it, even it, it is what's how, what um measure is that get my ruler there they are. are oh they're quarter of an inch quarter of an inch yeah you know you can have some fun with that i mean normally they when i was taught it was um anything a quarter of an inch or above or larger than a quarter of an inch scale you you, you would match um some people do some people don't but if it it really does offend the eye if it's if it's a little bit off doesn't it but but 
you can also have some fun with gingham. Like if you're making your shirt, you can put your pockets on the bias. You can put your plackets on the bias. You can put your collar. You, you can have a lot of fun. Ooh. Because things are on the bias, You then you need to stabilize it with your interfacing, interfacing. right? Interfacing, beautiful, yeah. yes. And that worked yeah. for your starch. That would yeah. work as well. But it takes the pressure off, and then it adds a lot of interest to, wow. you know, to have the, you know, the different... Yes angles going on so so you could um well, we were talking about uh fabric and weave so i think i could show you there um where's my so there's my that's my selvage edge you could i uh, i can see where the the holes are where it's been on the loom that's it right that's it. so yep. when i pull that yeah that there's that's not going anywhere that, is it you hear that pop can't you <laughs> see and that's your straight of grain. That is so the most stable part of the cloth. So does that mean it's going, that's that up and down, yeah? That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. And then when I go this way, yes. ooh, look at that, look, ooh. A little bit of give, that's your cross grain. Yeah. Cross grain, which is 90 degrees to the straight. Right. And then if you go take a 45 degree angle, okay. drop one hand, Drop your right hand a little, yeah, now, now stretch. Ooh, and look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's the true bias. Wow, okay. The true bias on the 45 degree angle. So, and that's where you'd be cutting. You'd take that, that 45 degree line and that would become your straight of grain for all your accent pieces. So your oh, pocket flaps, yeah. pocket, gauntlet, Okay. That's it. That's it. Yes. Is the band cut there separate? You go. Or, there you go. Oh, there, yes. Now there you go. That would be that good will... for the summer, wouldn't it? If I did that version. Absolutely. And then I wouldn't have to worry about my sleeve fitting. Don't worry <laughs> about that. It will always be long enough, Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> you could even put your back yoke on the bias. <gasps> Should I do that? That would Why be good. Not? Oh, and that then, would you be... know, make sure, make sure, sorry to interrupt you, but make cool. sure you when you you fold your yoke in half you know exactly where the center of that is and then line that up with the center of your square which is now a diamond make sure that all goes straight down so visually when you look at that you're going so, to see so this the center diamond that's on point on the yoke lines up with a, a square on the straight on the back wow uh, that's no? yeah well you 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 want to draw you know, we were talking about your bias line. Yeah, so on the picture, hook. Picture a straight line going from the top of your red check to the bottom of the red check, but on the bias. So it's going crossways. Oh. Yeah. It, it's going this way, but it's it's hitting. Yeah. That line is hitting the corner of the check, the next corner of the check, the next corner of the check. Yeah. See if you can do that. Because if your scale is perfectly balanced, quarter of an inch, warp and weft, yep. then it should work. And then that line that's going, that gets tipped. That's now the center back. I of the get you. Gotcha? Same with the pocket flaps. Make sure if your pocket flap comes down to a point like that. Yeah. I don't know, do you have outside flaps on your pockets? No, no, no. okay. No, that's fine. Um, so what about when I'm cutting my sleeve, I, I presume I'm not going to attempt because it's a different angle. So I don't have to try and match that one to that bit, do I? You could, you can look work, work with your notches and just make sure your notches line up, say your notches in the middle of a red square. Yeah. On your forepart, your front, and yeah. on the front pitch of your sleeve, that they those line up. Wow. And then you'll have a little bit of leeway but you're oh, you have to work on check it on your seam allowance as well not on the outside of your pattern what have you got five eights or something what are you sewing on what's your seam allowance uh it's a yeah a centimeter as a centimeter okay yeah. so you can you know put a pin through your tissue pattern put a pin through that seam line where it intersects the notch yeah. And then put a, and then, yes. So 
Yeah. Uh, I wonder if we should do a little tutorial on that. <laughs> <How to match. laughs> I, I can see the cutting out of the pattern taking more time than the sewing. <laughs> and also in the crown of the sleeve, because you, you've done this before. Yes. So you know that there's a certain amount of ease yeah. in that sleeve crown, isn't there? Yeah. So because there's ease in the sleeve, there's no ease on the front or the back. You can't match that. That's not no. going to work. But once you, the ease is out and you're down sort of around the pitch here, yeah. then you can match a few stripes going across the sleeve and then across the, the fore part. It takes a little bit of a turn, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, no, well, I mean, it's possible. Well, we will, we will like with your, your garment, we will chart the progress each week. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> But it, I thought it would be lovely to maybe have that as a as a as a target, a, a goal, and maybe get it done for when we start the sewing bee, so I can present with my shirt on. <laughs> I mean, what a great idea! You know, and you're working full time, and you've chosen something that has some challenges, right? You've got yeah. to want to match the plaids. You also might want to play with the, with the. Um, the properties of the fabric a little bit see if you can make some visually interesting things out of it that might take some trial and error um you might do something like with your yoke or and find out it it, it doesn't look right you know it's it's, yeah. it's not perfectly centered so you might have to cut another piece so this is all going to take some time mm. and you're busy mm. and um so well, I've got lots you know, of it. <laughs> you know, you know. It's nice to have some to, to mess about with and to try some things. I, I, and I think that's I, what I'm looking forward to. Not that mm -hmm. I've got three meters of fabric and I'm making a garment. I'm actually, I, I want to use it a bit like what you were saying with the research and development. That is almost an enjoyable, well, I want to have that as an enjoyable process. Yes, alone, exactly. Regardless, I'm not too yes. too fussed about the finished item. It's having that time playing and cutting. And if it goes wrong, doesn't matter. I'm going to cut another bit because I've I've got that fabric there. So it it is it is that a chance to experiment. And that's the joy mm. of creating things and building things. I find you know every time there's a new commission it's just it's it's a fresh start and it's that fresh oh, yeah you know what's what's possible here yeah um, and I, I you know your heart sinks for the, the people in the sewing bee because they don't have the time no they can't think that they, they, there's no space and they get this pattern they run to the haberdashery they grab some things they come back yeah. and then it's a competition you know and it's it's completely different environment and and the pressure is and, you know make the difference in the finished product indeed and i think that's where some sewing bee contestants have got frustrated because they want to use the show to experiment oh i'm going to try this oh i think i'm going to try that which is wonderful but you just don't have the time to do it you've just got to make it haven't you there is no time to experiment really no and i think sometimes what I'm hearing on the show is, is an unreasonable amount of time. You mm. know, you're going to make this in four hours. And I think, I wonder if I, wonder if I could do that in four hours. You know, it's, it seems, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of a crunch, it's crunch time. But it is, at least it's, for whatever, the, whatever the kind of television we want, <laughs> it's, you know, it's all in, it's all in the form, yeah. isn't it? And, uh, um, and we're getting well, close well, to it. And I think before the sewing bee starts, we might have a little episode where we, where we talk about what we're looking forward to for the sewing bee. Uh, that'll be a nice little episode too, won't it? Um, oh, so, so have you got any um, projects that you, before we finish that um, uh, other than the, uh, the, the dress there uh, that you're doing yourself uh, to have a play with? Well, I was thinking about what we would do next and I just happened to have one of my bespoke clients said to me, um, I've got this leather garment and I'm going to give it one more season and then it's going to the charity shop. And I said, why? And she said, oh, it's just going to be such a, you know, such a palava. Here it is. So this is a really beautiful, can't see the whole thing. It's a really stunning jacket. It's Isn't got some it? lovely, I'll bring it closer to the camera in a minute, but it's got some lovely handwork top stitch on it, but it's the lining was shot. Oh. So, what I've done is I've unpicked the lining. Okay, so there's now now you can see the the inside of the pockets. 
you can see, here, let me bring it a bit closer. Um, you can see here the shoulder pad is just, it's come away. Oh, yeah. That's a bit of a mess. Um, this hanging loop needs some attention. Um, the, the interfacing here, it's just come away. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's not attached anymore, but that's not a very good fusible. Um, the pockets, I think she's put her finger through these. Um, it just needs a general cleanup and a new lining and yeah. then just treating the, the leather on the outside. She'll have a whole new piece. And, you know, in this day and age when people are thinking deeply about what to spend, mm -hmm. what to keep, how to keep the industry, you know, keep things going. Look at that top stitching. Isn't that beautiful? See that, that leather is, and that's the beauty of leather. It just ages wonderful. That's the, due to the nature of it. Well, absolutely. And I think it, you know, it's gotten better actually with age. I mean, this pocket is, is starting to ravel out of place. And oh, so we'll, we'll, we'll just have to yeah. redo that. But the bound buttonholes, they're in good shape. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It just needs a bit of, you know, the old dubbin, you know, that, you know, the leather conditioner or beeswax or something. I'll just give it a good bath while I'm making the lining. I'll give this a good bath. I'll rub yeah. it up nicely. And then um, when the lining's ready and this is all dry, then I'll put the two together. It will be supple. It won't be so dry and, and crackly. Yeah. Um, but basically, you know, this was made 20, 25 years ago and it's, it's got the kind of make and the cutting that you don't see today. You know, it, it has a lot of um, courtesies in it, which because of our fast fashion, we're not seeing anymore. So, yeah. they, I mean, this deserves a second life, as it were. Well, and, I can go on for another 20 years, can't it then? Exactly, exactly. And I think a lot of people think this when the season changes, they think I'll just, okay, this is the last year. You know, I've, I've worn this to pieces. It's done. But it's not. It was made once, it can be made again. Yeah. Or it can be made, or it can be made better. So I'd like to um, make a, a few little films of, of along the way, how I'm working this and maybe inspire people to, to take on a, a project like oh. this on their own, because that's what we're trying to Indeed. do. It's, it's not, not all about making new garments, isn't it? It's about making, making do and mending, yeah. keeping that kind of philosophy going. And how many of our, our listeners and viewers out there have got a garment where the, the lining is starting to come away? I bet there's many, many. Let us know in the comments below if you've got a garment like this where you think, oh, I could just do that. That is a job I could do, but don't know where to start. Well, then hopefully yeah. if you do a couple of videos where we see what you do with that or just even us chatting, uh, it will maybe just help someone to go, do you know what I'm going to put that lining right i'm going or i'm going to simply repair that pocket so my finger doesn't my, my pan yes. coins don't fall through exactly you can take part of the garment away yeah you can lift that out of out of out of the way and then yeah. you can repair what's underneath and then put it back together yeah and then you've got a jacket which you can take off in public yeah. you know put on the back of your chair and it's yeah. not going to look like it's torn to rags um but I would imagine, I would imagine most people have something. And oh, the other thing, indeed. so just say in, 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 in kind of closing that a lot of times the reason why lining comes away or tears, because it shrinks at a different rate from your wool. Of course. And, so, and a lot of times in manufacturing, yeah. it, they'll, they try to give you a, a centimeter seam. Sometimes they don't, the seams don't line up. They yeah. wrap pretty soon before you know it. You've not done anything. You know, you're not, it's not like you're cartwheeling in this thing or, you know, um, treating it badly. It's, it's, it just comes away because yeah. it's not strong yeah. to begin with. And because you you think it's getting that, you put your arm through, you, you brush it up when you put it mm. on. That lining yes. does get more wear really than yes. the outside, yes. doesn't it? Exactly. There's a lot of stress on the line. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's going to be brilliant. We'll, oh. we'll see what we can do with this, shall we, Stuart? I know, I, we're all inspired to do more. It's wonderful. And our viewers are as well. They're, it was lovely on the last episode seeing what they're doing and, and what they're making too. It's, uh, it's great. It's re it really is good. Um, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's just demystifying some things which, which can come across as, 
really uh, intimidating. We're actually, when you dig down to it, they aren't at all really are they once you understand and and you sort of it's like you know you, a, a misty window in the morning you know and you wipe it away you can actually understand what you're doing and it's like ah oh, i see now it's such a good metaphor and i think people should remember these things were made once you know, somebody made them somebody took pieces and bits yeah. and reinforced it and put them together it was made once it, and and there's that that should give you some comfort you know you think yeah. about it was put together, but there are mysteries in it, but once you see, and hopefully whatever questions you have out there, please let us know, we can help wipe the window clean for you. And so the direction then is easy to see where to go. Oh, what a way to, what a way to finish. High five. Saturday All right, five. well done, well done. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. It's been lovely to talk to you all. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments uh, anything, as, as Carol says, any questions, anything that is still just a bit too misty for you that perhaps we can help to continue to demystify. Otherwise, we will see you on the next episode of So What. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.